is a sneaky little element. It's malleable and durable, so it's no wonder that for years we used it in piping and added it to paint. But it's also extremely poisonous. It can create problems all over the body, from rashes to abdominal pain to anemia. But the most serious effects occur in the brain, and especially in the brains of children. It can cause headaches, memory loss, learning disabilities, behavioral issues, and seizures. And kids don't even have to be exposed directly. Women who wind up ingesting lead can store it in their bones. And if they get pregnant, that lead can be passed on and damage the brains of their children. Lead poisoning is still a big problem in the US today, and not just in communities you may have heard of, like Flint, Michigan. So what's actually happening to the brain when you have lead poisoning? And is there anything we can do to stop it? I'm Anna, and this is Gross Science. Lead messes with our brains in a few different ways, but to understand what they are, let's look really quickly at how brain cells, or neurons, communicate. And I promise this will be short, sweet, and hopefully deeply enlightening. Okay, so neurons have a long tail called an axon at one end, and branch-like structures called dendrites at the other. They talk to each other when the axon from one cell sends chemical signals to another cell's dendrites. The receiving cell can then pass the message on to yet another neuron. And all that communicating happens in this tiny gap between the cells called the synapse. One thing lead can do is block those chemical signals from being sent, which sounds bad enough. But lead does another thing that can have even more long-term effects. It can make the synapse, that connection between your neurons, become weaker over time. You see, in order for neurons to maintain a strong connection, the axon needs to know that the dendrite is receiving its messages. We're getting a message. So the dendrite produces a molecule that lets the axon know it's being heard loud and clear. Copy that axon, message received. That molecule is called BDNF, and you can kind of think of it like the best friends molecule. It makes the axon and dendrite's relationship even stronger. Besties! But in order for the cell to produce BDNF, it needs calcium. Calcium usually enters the dendrite through channels that act like a door, which open for a little while when a signal's received. When the door is unlocked by the right set of molecules, calcium flows through freely. But when lead's present, it jams the door, preventing calcium from entering and keeping BDNF from being made. That means that the connections between brain cells start to wither. In adults, having poor connections between your neurons is harmful enough. But in children with their fast-growing brains, it's especially dangerous. Not to mention that the amount of lead needed to cause brain damage in kids is much smaller, in part because their brains are making and removing new connections at a much faster rate. Sadly, in the past, there haven't been great treatments for lead poisoning, and especially not for its effects on the brain. But recently, scientists have shown that simply by adding a BDNF substitute, neurons may be able to bounce back. Here's a video showing this process in action. On the left are normal cells, in the middle are cells exposed to lead, and on the right are cells exposed to lead that have been given BDNF. When the green dye disappears, it means that the neurons are able to send their chemical signals. So when the video turns black, you know everything's working properly. You can see that the green starts to disappear in the cells with additional BDNF, even though they've been exposed to lead. Now, we're still far from using BDNF as a cure for lead poisoning. This isn't even being tested in humans yet. And certainly, preventing the exposure to lead in the first place should be the primary goal. But this research offers hope that one day, lead poisoning may be much more treatable. And that's a great thing, since today, at least 4 million American households with kids are exposed to high levels of lead. And that's Gross. Ew. How do you think your family or town would deal with finding lead in its homes or in its water? 
Well, Nova just made a whole documentary about Flint, Michigan, which experienced a massive lead crisis from tainted tap water. I frankly thought I knew the whole story of Flint, but I learned so much more watching this film, especially about the amazing people who rallied to help save the city. You can watch it on PBS or online starting Wednesday, May 31st. And if you have a question about what lead does to the brain, leave it in the comments. All right, see you soon.